Hello everyone and welcome to this video. In today's video we're going to talk about headache, specifically how to take a history of headache. In an OSCE scenario, you may be presented with a patient with headache, so you have to explore the symptoms and take a good history. You may be aware or not aware of this, but for exploring pain, always use the acronym Socrates. And we're going to explore each word of this uh, acronym. So let's start with SIGHT or S. S stands for SIGHT, which basically means where is the pain of the headache starting from. Knowing the site of where the headache uh, is coming from is very important. So let's just use an illustration to give a better idea of what is going on. This is an illustration of a brain. So if the patient is complaining of a headache and the pain is bilateral, so affecting both sides of their head or the brain, so let's just circle this and circle this, something like that, you can start thinking of a tension type headache. So bilateral, so you can say think um, tension headache. Okay, and let's move this a little bit. Now, if a patient say that the headache is mainly focused around their eyes or one eye particularly, you need to start thinking cluster headache. If the pain is uh, short, like a short painful attack around one eye, think cluster. So let's just highlight one eye, uninateral. And uh, maybe plus one eye, think cluster. headache. However, be careful that also migraine uh, may affect one eye. So let's just put like an arrow. Uh, beware. Also migraine. Uninateral. So you need to kind of like learn from more uh, information that the patient may present. So let's just carry on with the uh, acronym Socrates. So let's go to onset. Let's move this a little bit. Onset, which is O for onset. Or when did this start? This, this may vary from patient to patient. So you just kind of like have to explore that in a bit more details. The next thing you could ask is the character of the pain. So let's go for C, which is the character. Character of pain. So if we go back again to the to the previous illustration, this leads us to our next point. Let's start with tension headache. So tension headache, we said it was bilateral. Now most patients describe this as a tight band. So let's just pull this arrow here. Describe as a tight tight band. Okay, it's a tight band sensation, which um, most patients with tension headache will tell you in their history. Now, going to um, cluster headache, we spoke about it being unilateral, unilateral affecting one eye. The main thing you will understand from um, cluster headache, they always say that it's a short, painful headache. Okay and obviously affecting one eye. So these are the two things you can start picturing together to think cluster headache. While for migraine, it's slightly different. Uh, again, you need to take more information as we go along. Hopefully you can understand more, but it described most of the time as unilateral pulsating, pulsating headache. Okay, so put that in your, in your mind. Let's Pull it back up. So we have finished the C and let's go to radiation or R, which is radiation 
or where does it go? Where does the pain go? In headache, uh, pain shouldn't go anywhere else, but obviously some patients may have neck stiffness and some may, some may have fever and other symptoms. So you need to, you need to ta- start thinking of something more sinister, maybe meningitis or um, something more um, dangerous. So obviously you need to think with your clinical uh, judgment if you want to admit them to the hospital or not. In this video, I'm just going to focus mainly on tension headache, migraine, and cluster headache. So the next one is uh, associated symptoms. We're kind of running out of space. <laughs> um, associated symptoms. So basic, which is which is what I tend to ask patient, and this is kind of like the main key. Um, point you use to differentiate your differential yeah so let's go back to how um, tension headache so associated symptoms uh, mainly i would say a stress stress is the most common one with uh, tension headache for cluster headache we mainly have um, i would say um lacrimation is a common one uh, flushing is also very common let's just write that a bit better so going to migraine let's just yeah going to migraine um the main thing i've noticed the patient complains of um, uh, photophobia which is um Increase sensitivity to to uh, light. They also have sonophobia. I think it's called sonophobia. Don't quote me on that. Which is increased sens- sensitivity to sound. Not very common. And uh, what what is very common in migraine is aura, which is uh, a sensory sensation associated with the headache. Uh, that could be a visual. Uh, blurred vision um, and whatever and uh, change of change of taste and so forth and so on uh, every patient is different but yeah aura is very common with um, migraine especially photophobia also nausea um, nausea sometimes vomiting not that often but they kind of like walk um, together I hope you, you can start to picture a little bit the slight differences in the type of headache. So going back to the next to the uh, next point of the Socrates acronym is T for timing. We are literally struggling with space, uh, so let's just say timing. Timing. Now this is basically when does this uh, symptom occur, mm-hmm. and uh, when is it worst. Um, and how long does it last for? So it's few things uh, all together. Um, some people do it differently, but I, t- I tend to accumulate all the timing um, of the symptoms in T. So let's go back again to our illustration of uh, tension headache. So T for timing, let's use a different color. So there's no exact timing for tension headache. So let's just say uh, we um recurrent okay because there's literally no timing for it so it could be um any time because it's mainly due to stress so i don't think you, that depends much on the timing going to cluster headache um let's just put another arrow here for cluster headache the symptoms um in regards to timing they can last for um 30 minutes to about a couple of hours to two three hours okay and you can have these symptoms maybe uh, once or twice a week twice a week or even more and these symptoms can last can last uh, months uh, typically um, typically uh, I would say three months but well, everybody's obviously uh, different. 
for migraine, timing is also quite tricky. It varies a lot by patient. Um, but on average, you know, migraine tend to last at least a couple of hours. So a couple of hours. Okay. And uh, this can last for days. Um, for days. Now, it doesn't generally last as long as cluster headache. But again, it varies from patient to patient. So it's quite difficult to understand the timing. Okay, but it's good to have an idea. So let's go back to uh, Socrates again. So we're almost at the end. So E, E stands for um, exacerbating factor. Um, so basically what makes it um, better or worse in simple um, terms. So what makes it worse or better? Now, going back to um, the headaches we've explored, every patient is different. Um, once we did, one thing I do know that migra with migraine, um, paracetamol and um, paracetamol doesn't work. Okay, paracetamol seems to be uh, more helpful, helpful in um, tension type headache, headaches. And definitely with cluster type, cluster type headache is a, is a bit uh, different and I don't want to explore too much treatment, but yeah, you need to ask the patient what make it uh, worse or better. Obviously with um, uh, tension type headache, stress makes it worse, which uh, with migraine um, light uh, makes it worse. And obviously activities are much more restricted. So a good history at this point, you kind of already know uh, what diagnosis you have in mind. So our last point, we managed to do it. Our last point is uh, severity. Severity. Normally I ask patients to score it from one to 10, obviously 10 being the worst. And they, they will tell me um, where they score, depending on their symptoms, on, on their subjective uh, symptoms. After doing and finishing Socrates, you go usually, obviously, to your usual stuff. So, um, past medical history, okay, family history, um, social history, um, you know, how are teens at home, okay, and obviously drug history. You want to check for the allergies um, and stuff like that. And um, obviously, don't forget to ice the patient with this ideas, concern, and expectation. I'm not going to explore too much about this because, you know, there is so much and they will be, will be here all day trying to um, go through this. But one last thing I'd like to explore is the, the red flags that I believe you should be aware when uh, taking a headache history. So let's just move to this side, just a small section for red flags or symptoms you should be worried about. Just circle it a little bit. So the first thing you want to be uh, careful is uh, intracranial, cranial, cranial bleed, which the patient would, um, when you're taking the history in regards to the character, they will talk about worst ever headache and they will often describe it as a thunderclap headache thunder clap headache and they will often describe it as as if someone has smacked the back of their head with uh, uh, something with a break or something like that okay so that will make make you think, um, yeah, something something's going on like a bleed. The next thing you should be worried about is um, raised intracranial pressure, or to say raised ICP, which is intracranial pressure. Um, this is quite tricky because the patient would have a non-specific symptoms but they kind of like the main thing is that they're vomiting 
okay and they have um, reduced um, awareness reduced um, GCS which is their Glasgow um, Gla Glasgow glaucoma score something like that so yeah um, so some of them we actually have seizures and quite uh, neurological symptoms so let's just say uh, neuro symptoms so just to be aware of that Another one to be aware is uh, meningitis. I mentioned it uh, previously in the video. In the video, meningitis. So you need to. This is obviously quite common uh, knowledge nowadays because obviously we've had some bad stories. So you have, you know, your uh, neck stiffness. Stiffness. Um, you have your rash. Um, you, you, you know, fever. So basically, your septic uh, type symptoms. So um, photophobia. So keep an eye on that. And the last one I'll, I would like to cover is um, temporal, temporal arthritis, which is very common uh, with elderly, elderly. Well, over fifty-five. Okay. So your patient would generally be uh, over fifty-five. And uh, what the main thing they would talk about uh, tenderness, tender, tender scalp, okay, tender scalp, and uh, jaw uh, claudica uh, claudication. Claudication. So these are the main red flags I tend to uh, keep an eye on um, when taking a headache history obviously this is, a, is an OSCE scenario but down the line of a career keep an eye on all these uh, red flags and uh, wish you good luck anyway that's it for this video i hope you guys enjoyed it I, I try to make it not too long so if you have any questions of anything that you're not uh, sure about you need more clarification um leave a comment below and i'll make sure i yeah reply to your comment to the next one goodbye